<laughs> oh. <coughs> I'm not very well, so you're gonna have to forgive me, alright? <laughs> What do you mean and welcome? My name is Shusha Anime and welcome to A Light in the Dark. This is one of the games that I backed back on Kickstarter about a few months ago. And it has now finally come out as a full game. It's um, published as a Sekai project. I followed them on Kickstarter and if you like their games, why not give them a follow on there? And if they've got any good projects backing them up, why not do it? I mean, I did it and I think I am going to enjoy this game right here. So guys, Ikumashoka. New game, right off the bat. I do have a bit of a cold, so you do have to forgive me today. This world is not fair. It's a Chinese game, by the way, originally. There was a saying. The world is one big intricate machine. With the people as its cogs and its lord as its screws. The countless pieces connect with each other in order to operate. Through continuous refining on top of repeated collapse and reconstruction, Modern society is eventually formed. The more complicated the machine appears to be, the more delicate it really is. One loose screw would stop the whole thing. One failed detail would lead to collapse. Very philosophical right off the bat, I must say. Therefore, we must be ever vigilant and watchful and remove every single problematic piece. Dots. Mommy needs to head out and take care of something, so you have dinner without me. You can eat whatever you like. Oh yeah, this isn't a very long vision novel in itself. It's like six to eight hours, so it could take me maybe 12 parts to do it. Maybe less. I think it's going to be a nice little ride, though. If Daddy calls, just let him in. Let him. I'm in the class, okay? Just tell him I'm in the class, okay? Mother, what are you doing? The laughter of an unknown man, hurried footsteps, and the sound of an engine starting. Duds. It was at that moment I heard... The sounds of dissonance from the machine. Are you relating the machine to your life? Interesting. So, it was very cold. I felt a freezing chill as I regained consciousness. It wasn't so much that I felt cold when I awoke, but that an icy draught had caused me to wake up. As I opened my eyes, they were met by darkness. Hello, music. Double headphones for this. Ooh. As my as I opened my eyes there was they were met by darkness. All I could make out was that I was in some sort of small room. You were in a prison cell. This place was unknown to me. It wasn't my room, nor was it a hotel room. My head hurt as if I had a hangover. I tried to stand up in order to find some sort of light switch, but all I felt from my legs was numbness. The music is very eerie, good gosh. <laughs> Where, um, the smell of cigarettes and mold in the air was nauseating. As I fought to regain my bearings, I realized that something was not quite right. Okay? This is already creepy. What happened to me? A sense of unease overcame me. I tried to calm down and organize my thoughts. I recalled that I was on my way home from cram school. Hello, who the hell are you? Why is half your head missing? Are you that girl from Court's party all grown up? I hope not. Finally up, rich boy. <laughs> An unfamiliar voice rang in my ears. Right when I opened my mouth to ask. Whoa! Uh, why do I have a stamina bar? <laughs> I'm a little concerned. Actually, scratch that. I'm very concerned now that I've got a stamina bar. I don't know where a foot swiftly sunk itself into my stomach, launched me toward the wall. <coughs> Pretty much, I felt my stomach turn, and I also vomited. However, all that came up was a dry fit of coughing. Hold on a second, let me just grab my bloody tissues quickly. I know, you're going to have to excuse me for one moment. Please excuse me. <coughs> this is also a reason that I prefer other little microphones other than ones in your face, but I can't be picky at times. I'm just going to work with what I have. I couldn't stop spasming on the ground. All that was on my mind was the intense pain, yet I was too also too scared to make any sound. 
Why have we been abducted of all things? Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, my body hurts. Where am I? If this goes on, what happened? I have to escape? Countless questions went through my mind, but before I could speak, I heard that cold voice again. Oh, you look all right. You were the poster girl. Who gave you permission to talk? And why is her name in Chinese? I can't read that. There was no change in her expression as she watched me struggle. There was nothing but a look of pure animosity in her eyes. You better keep your mouth shut. I do have the patience. I do not have the patience nor intention to play nice with you. Got that? I struggled to stand up, then came to the shocking realization that my limbs weren't numb. They were tightly tied up with rope. Oh, so why are we being interrogated first off? I am very interested in this. Ooh. I struggled against it, but the rope was far tighter than I imagined. Okay. What? I'm very concerned about that stamina bar. God damn it. Which boy, do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Or do you only respond after a good beating? Bitch. <laughs> yeah, bitch. <laughs> Another kick made me almost scream and curse her. Whew, close. However, knowing now was not the time to confront her, I gripped my teeth to force myself to stay calm. Anything I said at that moment could be fatal. I had to grasp the situation first. Could you mind stepping away just a little bit, please? Suddenly she got closer, not realizing her intention. Not really that's not her attention. My body instinctively tried to move away from her touch. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Scared? Noting my slight reaction, she gave a snort of contempt. The last shred of defiance disappeared as soon as the blade touched my body. Hello, what do you mean a blade? There was no chance of victory, no matter how I resisted. I waited for her next move. All you could hear in the quiet room was our shallow breathing. The tip of the blade moved across. Ah! Uh, the blade moved across my skin, making a small cut. My tensed-up nerves were extra sensitive, detecting the exact temperature of the air, the crudeness of the rope, and the sharpness of the blade. There was a certain feeling of warmth from the blood that flowed out from the wound and down my arm. Nevertheless, my mind was extremely clear. Kidnapping, human trafficking, organ trade. Somehow I don't think it's uh, the last two. I think it's more or less the first one. A few possibilities came to mind, but there was no way to determine which. Since we have to hang out a little bit before I get the ransom, let me make a few things clear. Don't try to run or talk without permission. I don't mind breaking a few bones. Humans can handle a few just fine after all. Oh, okay. You hear me? You know, I think the Chinese symbol there means like uh, unknown woman. Because in Japanese, that symbol right there reads onna in uh, Japanese. And that actually does mean female or woman. So, I'm thinking that just means I don't, a woman you don't know. You hear me? I know that quietly. I couldn't digest all the information at once. But the but one key word stood out. Ransom. Yep. Why are you holding me for ransom, though? It, it just seems a bit elaborate at the second for ransom, especially if you're torturing me and enjoying it. Older girl. Okay, I was close. <laughs> Why was it then only in English? The blade left my skin, and I swore I heard a little sigh escape from her. There was a sound of light footsteps moving toward the wall. Before I could even feel confused, a glaring light broke through the darkness of the room. Why did the music stop? Hello? Ugh. Oh, got a little desk light. Thank you. Not able to adjust to the sudden brightness, it took me quite a while to finally open my eyes. What came into view was totally foreign to me. The room was roughly 300 square feet in size. The wall that was meant for painting was now mottled. Wait, what do you mean painting? How do you know it's a wall that- Oh, you mean like it hasn't been painted whatsoever. Okay, got it. Its original colour no longer visible. A time had its way with the room, causing everything to become decayed. Be it the wooden chair, desk or bed, the resulting smell of mould in the air was reminiscent of ruins you'd find in a movie. 
Oh, hello! You are the kidnapper, are you? Well, lovely to meet you. The owner of this place stood near the window with a taunting smirk on her lips. Never lived in a place like this, did you, rich boy? I'm guessing this is her place then. She's got nice hair though. The words were clearly provocative, bearing the burning pain. I bearing the burning pain, I tried to observe her through the lamplight. Okay. She was a younger young, she was a young looking woman. She wore a dark overcoat and a scarf. Her sho her shoulder length hair caused her scattered behind uh, casually scattered behind her back. The bangs are almost covering her eyes. Surprisingly, she wore no face mask or helmet, nor made any attempt to avoid my staring. She didn't seem to mind her face being seen. Now, if this was a proper ransom, they would not reveal our identity to the person at all, because that means they would find them. So why is she content with that? This is going to be real interesting. There we go, this is a bit better. She didn't have the stereotypical look of a criminal, despite a hint of unease on her meager face. There wasn't an ounce of guilt within those dark brown pupils of hers that stared straight at me. You know what? I hate people like you. What have we done? I'm confused on what the hell we've done at the second. What have we done to make this woman hate us so much? Is my biggest question right now. She was she was talking to herself, ignoring how pale my face was. I've got to say that the imagery in this is very well drawn, very nice indeed. How pale my face was, and making no attempt to elaborate. This was not a conversation, but a simple declaration. Who was she? Where was I? What did she want? Why did she do such a thing? Countless questions circled around in my brain, but not a single sound came out of my mouth when I opened it. What did eventually come up was something totally unrelated. Why me? That's what I want to know. Why him? What has he done? The unfamiliar dry voice sounded like some rough sandpaper. So I haven't even had a drink. God! Why do you look even scarier like that? Why? The girl mumbled my question next to the window. The light reflected off the girl's face. Orange spots of light scattered across her messy hair. Yeah, yeah there is. Dancing like fire. Is she a yandere? Is she a yandere? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> she hung her head in contemplation. It took her. She hung her head in contemplation. It took her a while to raise her head again with a grin. No particular reason. That's a lie. As though it was only natural. The empty voice held no emotions, but instead of malevolence, but instead a malevolent sense of pleasure. I'm sorry if I, I, I want to make sure I read it properly, because I, I'm not, I, 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 I just don't want to mess it up. The world is just unfair. Isn't that your favourite line? Oh, you know me, you've got to. Seeing the shock in my eyes, she chuckled. How does she know what I say then, unless she actually did know me? Does. With that mocking statement, the curtain was raised for this kidnapping incident. Okay. And I got the first achievement, a light and dark, day one. So that was just the prologue. Oh, it's got an auto save feature. That's quite nice. So did that save? Ah, okay, that's how you save it. Got it. I'm glad I checked now. <laughs> All right, let's go a little bit more into this. Why not? You really got to excuse me. It's not hay fever. My brother's made me ill. I stood in the world of darkness. There was no sky or ground, only endless darkness. A dream. I realised amidst all the fuzziness that I was in a dream, yet I couldn't control my thoughts. The intermittent noise was annoying, like a radio with poor signal. It is like that, actually. Suddenly, the ground began to slowly sink as if it were quicksand. I tried to move my legs, but I realised I couldn't move. 
my heels, my knees, and then my arms. The darkness gradually devoured my body. I heard that vivid disdain before my vision was overtaken. I hate people like you. It's very peculiar. At the second. Day one morning. Oh. Oh. Thank you, game. Right, what time is it now? I couldn't tell the time. I need to escape. Untying the rope was my only option. The only exits were the door and the window. Was there really nowhere else? I should try to converse with her. A better relationship could be beneficial. Yeah, it could be. Who are you, though? A girl with long hair and sharp eyes. She didn't seem to be older than 30. Her pale skin didn't appear to be healthy, and she wore a clearly outdated overcoat and scarf. I still didn't know who she was. If only I can get her name at least. Why did she pick me as a target? Those are fair questions, actually. Still half asleep, but over my eyes, the room before me was still the same unfamiliar one. So if it wasn't a dream, a long sigh couldn't relieve the depression in my chest, and my heart sunk to the pit of my chest. Oh my god, there's a poster of Rabby Ribby! Yes! <laughs> Yes! Should I resume Rabbi Ruby at one point, guys? I don't know. Because it was fun. I'm glad to see a poster of it there. That makes me happy. I was kidnapped. Nice little Easter egg, Sakai Project. What was their objective? What should I do? My mind was all blank. There was more confusion than fear. It's been said that in the presence of a threat, you either become petrified, try to flee, or try to fight. Reflexively stopping your actions to avoid catching predators attention was probably the best way to describe how I felt. Yes. That's fair enough. And I was still stuck. I tried to pull the rope, but nothing happened. The headache was hard to bear. The pain medication I usually kept on me was in my bag, which was out of reach in my current state. So it's not even in the room, but there's a phone on the table. And there's a... Oh, let me look around the room quickly. There's a plug circuit for the light there. And we can't tell what we're floor on. Oh, there's the bag. Is that our bag? I can't tell. And also, is that our clothes or her clothes? Hmm. The headache was... Oh, yeah. Damn it. My mind did get clear after sleeping. Everything that happened yesterday still felt like a dream. But the reality of it was right before my eyes. Where is she, though? Why? Why is she doing this? Morning light brightened the up the room. I could see the peeling paint on the wall and the old pieces of furniture. There was nothing but decay, as though it was untouched for a long time. Was it an abandoned, empty house? Or did they actually live here? I'm not sure of that, actually. I would have thought maybe, but it just seems a bit... Ridiculous if they did manage to live here, if she'd managed to live here. The kidnapper was nowhere to be found. I couldn't hear anything and thus couldn't tell how many people were around. Perhaps shouting for help might catch someone's attention, but the kidnapper might be also right outside the door. Oh, oh. Contemplate the situation. That's my choice. Can I save it? I can't save it. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Ooh, I wasn't going to yell out. For a reason. If we do yell out, it's going to be ridiculous and that'll probably... Actually, no. That could have made her come to me directly, actually. But then again, that might have led to me getting another kick in the stomach. Making me lose even more stamina. So, it's probably better to contemplate the situation for now. My yelling might not be heard, and I could be in trouble if I if it got the kidnapper's attention instead. Exactly. I could still feel the pain from where I got kicked or the, the day before. I tried to make myself a little more comfortable and relaxed my back by leaning on the wall. First, my physical condition. My hands were tied up to the point that I had no space to move around, let alone release the rope. My body overall was fine, but I couldn't really rest in this position. I have to save my energy to escape. So, where to start? Oh god. What time is it? How did I get kidnapped? That's what I want to know. 
My memory before arriving here. I was on my way home from cram from the cram school. Someone suddenly called my name when I passed by a road under construction. My mouth was covered before I could turn around. The last thing I remember was the smell of some chemical. Some sort of anesthetic. Ether, maybe? <coughs> God damn it, I missed. Ah! Bollocks. I was so close to getting the tissue and everything. <sighs> Bollocks. I was thinking maybe um, chloroform or something like that. This felt like some plot straight from a movie that I never imagined it would happen to me. Not that many people are part. Not that many people passed by that place. Nor was there a surveillance camera. No one probably even noticed I was kidnapped yet. I was uncertain if there was an accomplice. If there was a accomplice, sorry. Come on, grammar. I was not. I was not particular bulky. Oh my god. I was not particularly bulky. Come on, two grammar problems in one sentence. But I doubt she could drag me away all by herself. True. In fact, who called me back then anyway? Despite my best effort, I couldn't even remember that person's gender. Okay. Uh, I'm getting more confused by this. Note update. Oh! Okay. Somebody's on the way. I was kidnapped on my way home, but perhaps she wasn't the one who was... She wasn't the only one who was involved. Okay. Before I could think further, I heard footsteps outside. I couldn't help but tense up. She's coming. Who was that? Miss Sadist Woman. Before I made up my mind on how to respond, I saw the girl pushing open a door. Let's talk. Okay. <laughs> well, um... Uh, um... This is awkward. Holding the knife and wearing the same overcoat and scarf, she stared at me. I tried to look back calmly, but I could still clearly feel my rapid heartbeat. Finally up, rich boy. I looked at her silently, trying to guess her intention from her words and actions. I was in an unfamiliar situation, and there was too many questions still unanswered. The location, the time, their objective, any sort of information would help. Are you free once your daddy pays up, so stay quiet. Please excuse me, I do need to blow my nose, otherwise I will be snivelling and sneezing everywhere again. I am so sorry. I wanted to record this game especially because I've been waiting for it for a long time. So, I'm not going to pass the chance. So stay quiet. Otherwise, I can't guarantee what will happen to you. After she told me that, she sat next to the window and lit a cigarette. It was easier to see her face in the sunlight. Her neglected long hair was messy, and her long bangs almost blocked her vision. Her pale skill wasn't makeup. More like she was something... More like something she was born with, or a result of poor health. If she's one with poor health, that would explain why she's um, called me a rich boy now. Like, that would explain it. Or maybe... Drug abuse? Hey. The girl's voice broke my train of thought. She stared coldly at me with the cigarette still in her hand. I will, take a few, I will make a few things clear. When I contact your dad, don't talk. Don't move. Don't have any funny ideas. This is not a game. I don't have the patience, and I don't mind shutting you up by breaking one or two bones. Digesting her every word, I pondered what to say. Got it. Got it. I'll play by your rules. If I said the other one, I'm definitely going to have a broken bone. Still assessing the best way to deal with her, I should have avoid triggering her for my own safety. You better... I'm free. I'm free once you get the money, right? What do you think? Ooh, ooh. 
Interesting. Her nonchalant answer approved my guess. Not that her as assent meant anything. Ascent, sorry. If a kidnapper's promise actually meant anything, that even world peace wouldn't be a pipe dream. Hao Cheng Jiang, age 18. Only son of CEO Hu Hua Jiang. Addressed in is Chongcheng Road, Lane 2. Oh. Living by himself, buying breakfast at 10 a.m. every day, jogging at the park at 8 p.m. Cram school every Tuesday and Thursday, which ends at 9.30 p.m. Always takes the shortcut at the walkway under construction. Oh, Jesus. Am I a hit? Because it doesn't seem like it's a ransom anymore. It feels a bit more than that. She lazily read my information and from time to time pulls to look at me, as though anticipating something. Quite comprehensive. <laughs> she grunted after noticing my lack of reaction. Leaking personal information wasn't new, but it was still uncomfortable to hear someone knowing your daily routine, like they knew their own garage. If she knew that much about me, did that mean an acquaintance of mine was behind all this? That's all I can think as well, but who's this acquaintance? My best attempts to remember still failed. Hard to believe she had any reason to pick me. No one but my parents and the building security knew my schedule, and none of them could be the leaker. Why not? First things first. You don't have to keep my feet tied up, you know. I have no intention of running, even if you don't believe me. My hands are still tied. Also, you have a knife. I couldn't run away like this, even if I wanted to. It's really uncomfortable being tied up like this, and it's just po- I'm going to get kicked. I told you before. Uh-oh. Oh dear. She interrupted me. She squatted before me and looked me right in the eye. I hate people like you. Having too much money to spend, never tasting any pain, and everything just goes your way. You know nothing, yet still act almighty like some big shot. I'm comfortable? You think I care? Let's make you more uncomfortable, I say. Uh, what a messed up personality. This is like, um, how do I put this? Definitely feels like it's more revenge sort of theme now. Too many people found society to be unfair, always blaming their failures on someone else, thinking they were victims of the system. True. If it was that easy to convince her, she wouldn't have kidnapped someone in the first place. That is also true. Hmm? Got nothing, to, nothing left to say now? Noticing my silence, she tried to provoke me. What are you talking about? Ooh, that was a risk. What are you talking about? Oh! Uh... I knew I shouldn't try to argue with her, but I couldn't stop myself. I couldn't tolerate such an extreme take on things. If I let her keep going, she might think she was onto something. I don't know anything about you, yet you think you know everything about me. My words went straight for the fallacy of her logic. Fallacy of her logic. I couldn't help but laugh. <gasps> that was the worst thing to do! Damn it! If you just want to take it out on someone, say it! Stop making it sound like everyone owes you. Oh, yep, that was a bad choice. Shut up. A kick with full force narrowly missed me. I gasped in pain. Gasped in pain in anticipation. You were all the same. What else can you do except babbling? Nothing, am I right? I smoked in despise. Despite. Uh, wait, I smoked a despise? I guess that works. Staring, staring at her face would... Staring at her face twisted in anger. Interesting. Ooh. Action mode. Here you can choose various actions. When your action points reach zero, the next phase will begin. I'm gonna chat. Rest. I should rest when I get the chance. So I can actually heal. So what now? Chat. Oh, click the icon on the top of the previous page. Click on one of the topics, the story. Can you untie me? So what now? Okay.
What do you want? We'll start there. What do you want? Are you an idiot? Money, of course. Do you think I enjoy kidnapping people? She grunted in disdain, then her mouth broke into a naughty smirk. Ooh. Of course teaching your type a lesson feels good too. Otherwise you would think the whole world only circulates around you. <laughs> the words were still aggressive. I still had no idea why she was so mad. Everything aside, just the fact I didn't even know her in person made it bizarre why she had such a grudge. So what happens after you get the money? Yeah. That's, I'll ask that. Kidnapping is naturally for money, but money for what? Will they ask for more? Escape abroad? And most importantly, do they intend to let me go? Yeah. Please answer that. What do you think? She raised the corner of her mouth and returned the question. The non-committal smile was creepy. It's none of your business anyway. You just pray your daddy pays up soon. That amount is nothing to you, right? I hope so too. Bringing this up covered my mind in shadow, but I couldn't do anything about it. I don't think our father is actually going to pay it somehow. So what now? Right, I'm going to look at this quick. So what's... Oh yeah, Maiden. Her animosity against rich people made it impossible to communicate with her. Right. Chat one more time. What's your name? Let's go for that. Hmm? What's your name? The girl was staring at her phone and didn't hear my question, so I repeated it. Huang Yi. She carelessly said two syllables before suddenly shutting up. She raised her head and looked at me cautiously. Say again? I secretly remembered the partial answer, but acted as though I heard nothing. Tch. She dubiously wrinkled her eyebrow, then glanced at me while biting her lips. You think I'll tell you just so you can call the cops later? How should I address you then? Yeah. How should I address you? Hearing my response, she burst into laughter. How to address me? Are you out of your mind? You can address me any way you want. I'm not here to make friends. Right. I'm pretty sure some of the choices I'm making are bad, but I will. Let's have a look at this maiden. Right, I still didn't know who she was. We now know her name is Huang Yi. Alright, so her last name is Huang, but I didn't I but I still had no recollection of her. Why did she pick me as target? So he answered one question, but we haven't got anything revolving around the situation sorted. I wasn't sure how much time had passed, and I'd grown hungry. My head still hurt a little, and my tied up limbs only made me moody. She just sat there, staring at her phone. She kept dialing some numbers with an anxious expression. Why don't you eat something? Not hungry. You have eaten, have you, you have eaten this morning? Just cut to the chase and stop beating around the bush, will you? Well, damn. She replied coldly, staring at me with a certain annoyance. Hey, chill. <laughs> hey, chill. Oh! God damn it, why? <laughs> Keep babbling, I dare you. After another kick out of nowhere, she looked down on me mercilessly. Your money, right? How much? None of your business. I tried to negotiate with her, but she just looked even more annoyed. Look, if you let me go now, all my money is yours. All the cash on me and in my bank accounts, that would work. That should work, right? I will say nothing and pretend this never happened. I live by myself anyways. No one will suspect it if I just say I took a walk. Shut up. You think I'm a fool? Why should I believe you? You think you can talk your way out of this? Just shut up and wait for your daddy to pay. She snorted and showed no interest in my proposal. What if he won't? He will. She interrupted me, raising her eyebrows in response. I have a feeling that my father in this game won't pay. I have that sneaking suspicion that he won't. I don't know why, it's just a prediction. You'll be in real trouble if he doesn't. <laughs> I realized her implication. My dry chuckle felt bitter. 
She had a point. I would be in trouble without the ransom. I suppressed my worry, knowing it was not the time to panic. My priorities were collecting as much information as possible, replenishing my stamina, and finding a chance to escape. Ooh, it's weird. I've never played an abduction game like this. This feels so different. Can I have something to eat or drink? I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. Oh? The rich boy is already hungry after skipping one meal? Yep. I admit to without hesitation, my hunger was real. And there was nothing impressive about hiding now. <laughs> she couldn't retort, so she poured me a glass of water from the bottle after a run. I can't grab it unless you untie me. Just lick it like a dog. Ooh. She's gonna be an interesting character to learn more about. I tried to convince her to loosen up the rope, but she had no intention of doing so. Drink. Then please hold it still. Seriously? No, it's not as do as she suggested. She sounded surprised. Wasn't it your idea? If you don't want to, you could just feed me yourself. Not breaking a sweat, I reply coldly. Pride was not edible, and I had to keep my strength. I thought that was a logical choice. <laughs> that was the most logical choice to me. Why are you? I was used to it. If someone wanted to insult or enrage you, just accept it plainly. People are like cats. They don't show interest in toys that don't struggle. Don't move. No longer composed, she moved close to me with the water in her hand. What are you... I was pressed to the wall without finishing my sentence. Wait a minute, aren't I stuck in a chair? Am I up against a wall then? She bent my head and forced the water down my throat like some sort of torture. <coughs> Want some more? She raised her eyebrows, smiling victoriously. Screw you. I couldn't say anything while choking. The spill of water soaked my clothes, making me tremble in this cold weather. So... Why... wait, cold weather? How do you... How do you well, it's sunny outside, so where the heck are you in the world, I know. That this is a Chinese game, but still. That was straightforward and violent, but at least I can rest a little after drinking some water. Okay, so that was a good choice. The cell phone on the table started vibrating. She stole a glance at me with pursed lips after seeing the number. People had small gestures when they were under pressure, like person lips flipping hair and biting nails. The person in question might not be aware of it, but in one's body language revealed his or her true emotions. Stay here, and don't you dare make a sound. Leaving with that threat, she walks out through the door with the phone. With the door closed shut, I vaguely heard a conversation outside, but I was not able to figure out the exact content. Was it an accomplice? There would be even less of a chance to escape if there were more of them. It wouldn't be an accomplice for one reason. Because if it were an accomplice, why would she leave the room? And if she told me to stay quiet, that means it must be my father on the other end. Because she told us not to make a sound. That's my view. That's my logic, anyway. Oh, I can see outside. Hello. I sighed toward the sky, as though mocking my effort, every undesirable outcome had occurred. If there was only her, then I had to rest as much as possible. There might be a chance to escape when she wasn't careful. Her door wasn't the only exit. I might even be able to jump out the window if I could free myself from the ropes. Locations, headcount, weapons, too many uncertainties let alone how to untie this damn rope. It was more practical to figure something out on my own than wait than to wait for a rescue. It would have been ideal if I could persuade her to let me go. I absolutely could not trigger her before I was prepared. As the very least, I should get her to drop her guard to facilitate my escape. After that, I would play it by ear. Right. And now it's night. It's almost night time now. So let's try to find something useful when she's not around. Ooh. I've got to rest once. There we go. We're back in the blue, which is good. I think that's like a margin of how much energy we have in general. So, we rest once. And then we observe. Alright, click on icon to change view. Okay. 
So what can I look at? So I can't look at that. I can look at the chair. I can look at the table. I can. I can't look at the cord, surprisingly. But I don't think I should look at the window somehow. And the curtains seems a bit bizarre. But I'm gonna look at the bag. The yellowing paper reveals signs of age. It seems to be some be of some popular video game from the past. There is nothing unusable as a weapon except a pen, which is a poor choice against a knife. Oh, updated note. Wonder why the curtains are highlighted in any way. Also, why can't I observe this jacket? Is that just part of this, I wonder? So let's, let's have a look at this. The ink green curtain is covered in thick dust. Most likely having gone unwashed for a long time. I can't even tell what the original colour was. It is for concealing the light in the room at night. It makes creaking sounds every time someone pulls it. However, if there is a need to conceal the light, does it mean there is someone else nearby? Ah! Maybe. Day one morning, and now it's noon. The sunlight shone. Th the sunlight shone through the. W Actually, let's check the note quick. All right, situation. There was nothing in my backpack that could cut the rope. If only I had something sharp. Right. So there's a load of questions we need to ask, or find out even. The sunlight shone through the window at a certain angle, adding some. Dy dynamism into the dark room. Even the mouldy smell seemed to be much fainter. Damn it! The girl walked back and forth in the room, anxiety clear on her face. What's wrong? Your dad doesn't believe you're with us. What an idiot! He probably thinks it's a scam. Yeah. This outcome it was only natural. Even I would not take this sort of call seriously. His baby boy will suffer if he doesn't come around soon. <laughs> What's so funny? You think I won't lay a finger on you? She frowned upon hearing my laughter and then took out her weapon threateningly. I was not laughing at you, I was laughing at like, oh god, I'm in shit. <laughs> no, no. It's just that I'm not that important to him. What do you mean? Noticing how odd my statement was, she raised her eyebrow and followed up. I haven't contacted my family for a long time. Our relationship isn't as close as you may think. Ever since I got kidnapped, I've been wondering if I should tell her that or not. I was a poor choice for a hostage. Maybe she would let me go, or silence me instead. However, it was only a matter of time before she found out, so I might as well have been transparent here. Why? Rebellious face or something? He's self-centered. Maybe he's just a workaholic. My complicated family relationships was hard to explain in a few words. I was deciding how to piece my senses together to answer her question. Do I choose this one, or...? Nah, I guess not. He spends half a year abroad and never cares about the family. He will work till midnight even when he's back in Taiwan, and I don't even see him that often on holidays. It's always about the company, it's all for the stockholders and employees, blah blah blah. In my opinion, it's all for his own ego. Whether it was my graduation, birthday, or even a car accident, he never showed up. Not even a single damn call. Clearly his job is far important, more important than me. He probably wouldn't even know about the accident if not for the hospital calling and emergency contact. So I was in hospital. I tried to shrug, but my tied up hands made it impossible. Anyway, he doesn't care if I'm dead or alive. I might even be, feel relieved about me getting kidnapped. Sorry about that, but you would have better luck with his secretary. Hell, if he let me go, I could even tell you his secretary's numbers as a bonus. I proposed to her half jokingly. Yeah, reaction was unexpected. Have I messed up? She didn't open her mouth, instead, just looking at me coldly from the beside the window. You think that's funny? My surprise, she walked to me while flipping her hair. You think you deserve sympathy? Want me to pity you? God. Yeah, I was not looking for pity. She grabbed my collar and pulled me so close I could feel her breath. 
car accident? Hospitalized? Your daddy didn't give a shit about you. Be fucking grateful that he didn't leave you a pile of debt. You think everyone has a happy family? You just gave away your situation to me. Ooh. Why have you got a debt? School, meals, a home. So many things you take for granted aren't this case for us. Stop acting like some victim if you know nothing. You just make me want to puke. Every word was delivered clearly. Her voice contained a certain indescribable weight. <laughs> Seeing me not responding, she let go of my collar and spat on the ground angrily. I'm wasting my time. Realized that she might have spoken too much, she turned her head away and returned to the window like I like a bursted bubble. Jones. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 we get it next time. Oh dear. <sighs> I sighed lightly. Things wouldn't be that easy after all. It was true, I wanted to win her pity, but that was not a lie either. My father always working and a mom never home. That's the image of the, my family. Every time I was home, all I could see upon opening the door was the vast empty living room. Well, at least you got a nice TV to wank to. I mean, come on, that's, uh, that's a bonus evil. <laughs> Ah, that's a joke, by the way. That's a, that's a joke. I don't know it myself. No, no. I noticed how big the house was. So that so big that I could not... I just, so I could feel the inches. Oh, he's got t shirts today. He probably does then. I breathed, I breathed out, raised my head, and looked at a small part of the sky from the window. The only lie was that I no longer felt hurt by it. Oh. Okay. Day one night. So we're nearly at the end of the first day now. Hunger. Night came and I had eaten nothing but some crackers. I never knew starving could be this uncomfortable. Yeah, it, is. it really isn't nice. She didn't seem to eat anything either. She was either staring at her phone or smoking while looking out the window. There are a few phone calls, but they were all made outside, so I couldn't hear them. I didn't know what they discussed, but it didn't appear the negotiation with my family was smooth. Um, after all the hesitation, I decided to ask her. What? I need to go to the bathroom. She stole a glass of me, but acted as though she heard nothing. I said I need to go to the bathroom. I repeated to myself, she wants you to piss yourself! <laughs> this time, she slowly turned toward me. You... She probably didn't expect my physiological needs. She opened her mouth awkwardly, but I couldn't say anything. Can you figure something out on your own? Clearly the tide I got angry when having nothing to say. She turned her head with a stern face, knocking on the desk with her knuckle. Realising this might be a chance to make her untie the rope, I grew silent. Toss. Not knowing my plan, she acted carefree, but keep, kept stealing glances in my direction. Since it was about time, I sighed innocently. Guess I'll have to do it here after all. Wait! Seeing I wasn't joking, she stopped me with a darkened face. Are you a retard? Can you go to the bathroom by yourself? Staying in an old house was one thing, but even a kidnapper wouldn't want to stay in a room filled with crap. Oh, I need a shit! Oh, no! <laughs> but I can't even unzip myself like this. Well, no, my hands are behind my back. You... Ah, oh, so annoying! Jesus. She pushed me to the wall and suddenly and turned me over. What an... I panicked, uh, I panicked over not seeing anything. I tried to turn myself back, but I only heard a calm voice next to my ear. Be quiet! She pressed my body with her elbow. I felt a cold sensation on my back. No question about what that was! No talking, no struggling. If you move, I stab. If you yell, I stab. She wasn't going to castrate me, was she? <gasps> No castrations, please. She knew that. Even without my genitals, I still need to go to the bathroom, right? Bear it. Bear it. Bear it. I kept under control and made sure I didn't speak, quietly awaiting her next move. <laughs> Suddenly, the restriction on my hands disappeared. Good move. Yes. Yes, I did good. Oh? Well, it was quite a relief, both mentally and physically. My hands were finally free, and... I, like, felt all my energy was used up. I never thought moving freely could bring such happiness. Even my shoulders and neck felt much better. 
If I could move my hands, my chance of escape was much higher. Raise your hands. So she saw through me. I saw the sharp knife when I turned around. Huh? I told you to raise your hands. Wait a sec. I won. She was totally not giving me a chance to explain myself. Not risking my own life. I raised my hands obediently. I can't escape even without the rope. Who would be so dumb as to fight someone with a knife? She ignored my nagging and showed no hesitation with her movements. You're not pulling down my trousers, are you? My happiness evaporated instantly within a minute of my freedom. I returned to being a prisoner. One glance at the bathroom and an antiquated... An antiquated? Wow, that's a word. Was the only word I could think of to describe it. The old bathroom naturally wasn't huge. The light from the window was the only illumination and the air smelled of mould. Even the window and the mirror looks mouldy. Good God. The tiles were engulfed with dirt, the bathtub covered in tiles. And the ink green toilet all looked like products of the last century. The drain was so nasty I couldn't even look at it. I tried to make a face in the mirror, but the reflection was so blurry I couldn't even recognise myself. Ah. Ah, what's wrong with my eye? Ah, my eye hurts. <laughs> my effort to tear the rope was in vain. I moved my hands back and forth, but I couldn't remove it without some tool. If I could find some sort of sharp item like a razor or a broken tire. Done yet? You better not have any funny ideas. Almost done. Sounds impatient outside the door to avoid suspicion. Oh, to, to avoid suspicion, I choose not to stay too long. I prepared to leave after finishing my business. Bathroom breaks were the only time I was by myself. If only I could find some weapons. Well, the toothbrush could be one, believe it or not. Sharpen up at the bottom. There you go. <sighs> I twisted the faucet. Surprisingly, there was still running water. Upon exiting, she immediately moved closer in case I was hiding something. From the road to my pocket, she didn't miss any detail. There's nothing, really. Even the body search didn't seem to remove uh, a suspicion of me, as though there was no way I could be this obedient. It'll be fine if I cooperate, right? I'm not brave enough to risk my life. You better not be. You're the one in. You're the only one in trouble if you try to escape. If the rope can't hold you, I wouldn't mind breaking your leg. Well then, making the final threat, she returned to the window and lit a cigarette. She, tr she tiredly supported her head. The messy hair hit her expression, making it hard to tell her, tell her thoughts, which seemed to disappear with the cigarette smoke. Hey. She recklessly went through my cell and asked suddenly, Why don't you have your mom's number here? I accidentally deleted it. Oh? She's busy. No time for me. Having no intention to talk about my family, I tried to end the topic quickly. Yet she started laughing mockingly. So busy that she doesn't even want to know if someone was kidnapped? <laughs> Isn't your dad the only one working? What is she busy with? Shopping? Afternoon tea? Buying luxury purses abroad? How biased can you be? Yeah, I was fed up with her unreasonable attitude. Trying to paint rich people as pigs drowning in money and all sorts of luxury. I know a lot of people who are poor. I mean, my family's been poor for years. My mum especially. I've grown up on quite a poor side, in all fairness. So I know exactly what this is like. And it's the same either way. Everyone has problems. I don't understand some people who are like down on the lower end who think rich people are the ones rolling around in money with no problems. That is not true. That is the biggest misconception I've ever heard. Anyone can have problems. End of. They had no ability nor brains as if as were only good at ordering people around with money. Exhausted their employees every day just to earn more money to waste. I didn't know how many people believed in such stereotypes. Always suspecting others were doing something illegal if they had a better life than themselves. They didn't ponder the reason behind those differences, but simply lamented the social injustice and cursed others' success. Such blind hatred of the rich was simply laughable. All these claims of they're just lucky and rely on their parents, I could do the same if I were rich, were just to propel forward their self-righteousness. Biased? Hearing my words, she snorted and raised her eyebrow in disapproval. 
Uh oh. Are you kidding me? Aren't you the one with the bias? What can you achieve without a diploma? Hey, who let people like her in? Watch out, she must be a thief if she's this poor. Aren't these your slogans? Ha! After her lively imitation, she burst into laughter. A voice filled with self-depreciation. I would like to know what I've done to deserve all your bias. Her turn sounded like one who has been through much discrimination. Oh yes. I wasn't sure what sort of experience had led to such an extreme mindset. Yet such words from that mouth of a kidnapper seemed only to prove those biased statements. Whatever. Interesting. We got something for that as well. Maybe it was due to discrimination from her being impoverished that led to such deep-sealed animosity. That's what I think as well. She turned her head and was unwilling to say any more. Night arrived. Her eyes sparkled like stars and focused on some faraway place I couldn't reach. It couldn't be helped. I know that. The world isn't fair. No, it's not. It's not, no. The girl's whisper was barely audible, and I wasn't sure if it was directed at me or to herself. It echoed within the room like some spell and stayed for a long time. I just, I, th I want to end this up soon, but I can't save. I literally cannot save. I can't. Dots, more dots. Many things were easier than expected. She never knew kidnapping could be this easy. He was taken without any sort of resistance. The girl looked at the boy next to the wall. He curled his body up to preserve some warmth. The short, rapid breathing seemed to indicate he couldn't find peace even in a dream. Uncertain if he really had fallen asleep, the girl didn't close her eyes despite her drowsiness. Are we looking at it uh, from like a, f a third person point of view now? Like as if it's us she's watching? Okay. Once she got the ransom, she could start a new life, away from the stigma and boredom. The cell phone flashed a notification. Some hesitation flew across the girl's face, but it reverted back to the same look of sternness. She had long decided that it didn't matter what it would take. So long had she lived for someone else, it was time for her own right. What do you mean, for someone else? Ooh, hold on a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. That was a good little... Ooh. And there we go. I'm going to end this part here because this, right here, is going to be an interesting play. And I hope you guys think it will be too, because I have many many questions about this but as i said i'm out of time so i unfortunately can't do any more so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed leave a like if you did subscribe if you want any more from me and i shall see you in the next video solidar guys i will indeed see you next time Ooh we this was a hell of a game so <laughs>